In this video, which is a clip from our port episode, we're going to talk all about what is port, how it's made, the three different styles, as well as the difference between vintage and non-vintage port. Here we go. Welcome to the most important part of this episode. What is port? The answer's a bit long, but hang with me, the information is worth it. Now, there's always been some confusion about port, so let's get one thing clear right off the bat. It's just wine. It's not a liqueur or a spirit like some people believe. Port is simply made from grapes, specifically a blend of grapes. There are about 110 different grapes allowed in port, but in practice, 30 are most common, and six in particular are almost always used. The process starts with regular must, or unfermented grape juice. Nothing new here yet. From there, we'll start to see the difference between port and other wines. Port is a fortified wine, which means a clear, neutral spirit. In this case, a 77% alcohol brandy is added mid-fermentation, making about a quarter of our final product brandy to three quarters wine. And this is what sets port apart from other wines. When the brandy is added, it raises the overall alcohol to 20% and kills the yeast. Winemakers do this when the yeast has eaten and converted only about half of the grape sugar to alcohol, and thus leaves the other half in the wine. This is why port is sweet, and I don't say that lightly. Most port has about 100 grams per liter of sugar, which puts it deliciously on par with Coca-Cola. So now at this point, we have a sweet, 20% alcohol, fortified wine. But the process doesn't stop there. Our wine now approaches a fork in the road before it can reach its final destination, its bottle, white, tawny, or ruby. Let's start simple, white port. This is the only port made from white grapes and the only port that is sometimes made dry. It's either standard white port or a reserve which has been aged in oak for seven years. These wines have flavors of apricot, roasted nuts, citrus, honey, and are great on their own or with tonic or soda as an aperitif. They're fun, fresh, and easy drinking. Next, we have tawny port. Tawny ports are aged in small barrels so the wine is exposed to oxygen from the breathable oak and has a lot of juice to wood contact. You can even see it in the color, hence its name, tawny. The wood and oxygen give tawny a signature nuttiness and oak presence. Flavors like dried fruit, coffee, caramel, toffee, cinnamon, almond, and toast are all common. From there, we have our subcategories of tawny port, and yeah, there's a bunch. First up, regular tawny, aged two years, Next is reserve, aged six years. Then you have what's called aged tawnies. 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, and 40 year. I mean, how crazy, right? How often can you drink a wine that's older than you, or close to your age anyway, at an affordable price? Also note that all these are the average age of the wine. I say average because most of these wines are blends of different vintages, or non-vintage. The longer a tawny wine ages, the more of those oxidative properties it takes on. They get smoother, more nutty, and take on flavors like butterscotch and vanilla. The last subcategory is Colleta Port, which is single vintage tawny. It's usually very high quality and aged at least seven years in barrel, but sometimes up to 50 before release. Easiest thing to remember about tawny ports, they can all be drunk when you purchase them. Just like white ports, tawny has been aged for you by the producer and won't really benefit from more aging. Okay, we're almost there. This brings us to where things get interesting. The boss level of ports, if you will. Ruby. While tawny ports remind us of brown things, caramel and nuts, ruby port reminds us more of fruit. This is because they're made from red grapes and aged in large oak barrels that impart very little oxygen or oak flavors. But it's in the subcategories where things get really exciting. Basic ruby port is the most popular style of port made and has flavors like blackberry, raspberry, cinnamon, and chocolate. Reserve ruby sometimes called vintage character, special, or finest, has five years of oak aging, is full-bodied and richer than standard ruby, and is one of the best values in port wine. Both ruby and ruby reserva are non-vintage, so you're drinking these right at release. Now let's talk vintages. This only applies to certain tawnies and rubies. A vintage year in the land of port is a really big deal. It's only declared by a producer about three to four times a decade when the producer decides it was an exceptional year. Vintage ports are made differently. Besides the grapes being from just a single vintage, they spend only about two to three years in oak, are bottled and then released immediately. Then you, the consumer, or the retailer or the restaurant, 
are expected to age them in the bottle for 20 to 40 years until they're in their prime and ready to drink. But good things come to those who wait. This is the height of port wine. Rich, full-bodied, integrated tannins, licorice, plums, bramble, toffee, violets, tar, tea, spiced fruitcake. These wines are exceedingly complex. And while they aren't quite as affordable as the other styles, they're still relatively accessible. 20-year-old vintage ports can be had starting around $100. Finally, there's one last style, LBV or late bottle vintage. These are vintage ports made in years that aren't officially declared vintage years and are aged longer and bottled later than vintage ports, hence late bottle vintage. They're top quality wines, ready to drink on release, and a good approximation of vintage port, but at a lower price. You still with me? I know it was a lot, but it's worth demystifying a wine as special as port. If you're still scratching your head, try drinking a glass or two yourself to help bring it all into focus. If you want to know more about port wine and see the gorgeous Porto and Douro River Valley, make sure to watch our full port episode, which is available for free on our page or the link to the left. And don't forget to subscribe.